Hello, welcome to the first official video for Tronics Lab. Um, this channel will be a kind of a supplement to my website, which I have, tronicslab.com. For my first video, what I wanted to do is actually do somewhat of a unboxing. I have two items to unbox. Uh, they're actually two lab instruments that I bought. Not new, they are actual eBay specials. They are sold as is for repair. And what I ended up buying was two HP um, instruments. One was a multimeter, an HP 3441A multimeter, and an HP, I think it is 3462B power supply, um, system power supply, and let's get to the unboxing. Okay, so I want to start with the power supply, system power supply unboxing. This just arrived today. Lovely, lovely, holy man. Okay, this is gonna be fun. It's packed well. Jeez. Okay. Gotta give him credit for packing it well. Oh, this isn't gonna work. I gotta get a box to put all this in. Son of a. Alright, well with that ridiculousness out of the way, <clears throat> this is it. So an Agilent HP Keysight, pick your, your favorite, 6632B is what it is, system DC power supply. It is a 0 to 20 volt, 0 to 5 amp power supply. And the nice thing about this power supply is that it can not only operate as a power supply sourcing current, it also sinks current to its its rated uh, five amps, which is excellent. So you have somewhat of an electronic load at the same time. Now, it's in pretty good shape. Just looking at the front, there's a few scratches on the top, you'll see, not too bad. Um, the reason I bought this one sold for repair as is, it's got a knob missing that's not too terrible. I think I even have a knob that I could put on there. It's not a, a factory knob, but I don't care that much about that. Um, I bought this off eBay and the description for the problem was that it turns on but doesn't do anything. The screen kind of comes half on, and that could be a bag of a bag of worms, or a can of worms. But in this case, he gave a lot of pictures on the option for the front, the back, all around, and you could clearly see. Let me spin this around for you. Maybe you can take a look and see what exactly the problem with this is. It's not necessarily a problem, but the reason why it was listed for sale in the United States, I might add, as not working. I'll give you a second. Well, if you look right here, if we can focus, it's configured as a 230 volt input which is not what we use here in North America. I'm in Canada. 
this was bought from the states they use 120 volt here in Canada we use 120 volt so in my my best guess is that in all likelihood this is a perfectly good power supply and the good thing about this is that the transformer inside is completely configurable you just change a few jumpers and you can set it to 120 volts so that's gonna be probably my second video is tearing this apart taking a look seeing if we can get it to power up hey got to get my first fix in here so I've got a rotary encoder that I had sitting around from from Adafruit this little rotary encoder from Adafruit hanging around I think this should do the job Let's pull that off Toss that on there Line her up. She's a bit loose, but gotta say, should do the job. Bit loose, but I can make it fit. Shim it a little bit, it'll be good. Last Cal date 2013. Not terrible. Don't know what this sticker here is. Buttons all work. They feel good. All feel good, nothing's broken. Damaged. Power button on off. Feels good. I'll show you the back of it again. Like I said, this thing is not light. So we got another sticker up here. What is this guy? Let's go safety check. 706. I think that's when this was first manufactured. But we've got RS-232 and GPIB. You got your your fault and inhibit control lines there. There's your output. Fancy little jumper from the sense to the negative, and there isn't one on the positive, but you got your output mode switch, fast, NA, normal. Currently on fast. And our mall number 6632B. Looks like the original calibration seal there. Void seal if broken. Not been broken yet. <laughs> Oops, nope, it's been broken. Just didn't look at the right angle. So, from our second teardown, or sorry, unboxing, just gonna unbox these today. This is my HP 3441A multimeter, six and a half digit multimeter. Another eBay special sold as is for repair. This auction, the pictures, there's limited pictures, but it looked to be in really great shape. And the description is what really, really sold me on it. These meters have a specific failure mode where there's a lot of error codes on the self-check, boot up self-check. And most of the errors are pointing towards the resistance checks. And in some cases it can be the hybrid um, ICs on these things that uh, that can go bad and they are, from what I understand, quite expensive and it makes the meter beyond economical repair. But more often than not it's a simple uh, I believe I see an op amp I think that has just gone bad and replacing that fixes it in most cases sometimes it's a zener as well that that has gone bad and I'm just hedging my bets that that's what happened with this one because it had all the telltale signs with the eight or nine error codes that come up on boot up but I'll, I'll unbox this for you
shot. There we go. This packing material. What the hell? November 21, 2003. Three four four zero one A multimeter. Like I said, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Not too bad. Got your standard R S two thirty two H P I B this time. This is a Hewlett Packard branded one. Inputs. This one is a 120 volt instrument, unlike that power supply, but I'll do this repair second. I want to do that power supply first. It should be the easiest, quickest, and then I may need to use that power supply in this repair. So, see you in the next video where I'll be attempting to repair if I even have to. <laughs> may just have to reconfigure the transformer. See so, yeah. ya.